the classroom. There's definitely a political agenda attached to it. Plus, a Montana high school principal is behind bars on 87 different counts. My, my initial reaction was good. He's arrested. We'll tell you what led to his arrest and on the right foot. It's exciting because um, like you don't know how much they are and when you get them for free, you're glad. A Billings nonprofit will have Washington Elementary students racing to the finish line. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for starting your week with us. I'm Andrea Lutz. There's more attention than ever on books and materials in school. And now a new player in the school curriculum is approved for teachers to use in Montana. This national conservative nonprofit says its goal is to offer a different take on history and current events. But it has Billings parents concerned. MTN's Jackie Coffin takes a closer look at PragerU. From asking Christopher Columbus about slavery. Being taken as a slave is better than being killed, no? And instructing women to be more feminine. Just try smiling and see how it affects the people around you. Prager U is giving kids lessons in history, civics, and current events with a different spin. As the false claims of racial targeting spread, so did the anger and violence. And now these lessons could be taught in Montana schools. There's definitely a political agenda attached to it. Clementine Lindley has two students in Billings Public Schools right now and is one of the many parents concerned. She's heard of PragerU content before. I think it's really important that if we're, this is truly going to be an education tool, that whatever is being taught from that system needs to be taught, a counter perspective needs to be caught, taught from a different system. Despite the name Prager University, Prager U is not an accredited educational institution. It's a conservative nonprofit organization founded by Dennis Prager, a well-known right-wing talk show host. It is a betrayal of parental trust to indoctrinate rather than teach. But getting approval to be a curriculum option in Montana is not based on politics. We are following the law, making sure that if a company comes to us and they've got a business practice and it's filed with the Secretary of State with a surety bond, I open the gate. Superintendent of Public Instruction Elsie Arntzen says PragerU approached Montana and was approved in August. We know who this entity is. And we recognize that there is value. But Arntzen says the curriculum will not be automatically implemented in schools. Individual districts and school boards must make that decision independently and fund it. A move Lindley hopes will not happen in Billings. It's really easy to get caught up in what's going on globally, nationally, and forget that locally we have a lot of things going on that we personally have lots of control over. A textbook case of change getting attention from one end of the political aisle to the other. But what I do appreciate are people that are recognizing what is being taught in our classrooms. Whether they like it or not, they still have a voice. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. The man who serves as both the superintendent and principal of Wyola schools is arrested, now facing multiple charges in the midst of a week-long school shutdown. A Crow tribal prosecutor confirmed today that Kenneth Deputy was arrested over the weekend by BIA officers. He's charged with 88 criminal counts of child endangerment for keeping kids from attending school, one for each student enrolled in the district. The arrest comes after a conflict erupted between parents and school officials in early October as parents protested the alleged mistreatment of their kids. Parents say it includes their children getting grabbed by the arm and being called demeaning names. Crow Tribal court documents say deputy was contacted by officers last Wednesday asking why the school was closed and at that time he said it would open the next day, but it didn't. He also said there would be a board meeting Thursday night, but that was canceled too. The school remained closed today and many families are now considering their limited options. Unless they go to Lodgegrass, they're going to go to a boarding school that's 90 miles away or they're going to go to Ranchester, which is 23 miles away, or I mean, there, there's, there aren't many options. The parents are kind of, they, you know, truly the parents and grandparents raising their kids, they're stuck. If convicted deputy could face one day in jail per child, 
He's being held in tribal custody and appeared in court earlier this afternoon. It's not yet clear when classes, though, in Wyola will resume. Several Billings businesses basically closed all day today after a car crashed into a power line, knocking out their power and for hours. As our Charlie Kleps reports tonight, police now say it's a case of road rage that went too far. I'm near the intersection of Midland Road and Songbird Drive, and as you can see behind me, Northwest Energy is hard at work replacing a power line which was knocked over by a vehicle Monday morning. It actually caused businesses along this road to lose power, but fortunately it appears everyone made it out okay. When employees showed up to work Monday, this was probably the last thing they expected to see. Just out of nowhere, heard a loud bang. It almost sounded like a, um, like a transformer blowing. That loud bang was actually the sound of a vehicle crashing into a nearby power line, startling many people and businesses along Midland Road. As soon as I heard the bang, the power was out. I immediately went outside thinking somebody was hurt. I saw the, the pole kind of shift. Sign Pro was one of the businesses that completely lost power, making it nearly impossible possible to do their job. We have to let our customers know that our power's out and we can't get to them because we literally can't really do anything. And they weren't the only ones. I think it took out the power all the way down the road because we had people coming out of their businesses and, and uh, they were trying to see what was going on. GCR Tire employee Andy Rubelkaba believes many businesses were affected by the crash. One police say was caused by road rage. I just heard it and I was right there and I you know came out to see what was going on. I just wanted to make sure everybody was okay. Rubel Kaba believes one driver tried to cut off the other who then was forced to swerve off the road and into the pole. Definitely a lot of damage done. Um, and as far as business wise, it definitely takes a toll on the businesses, you know, all that time that we are down. Northwest Energy was on scene almost immediately, but after five hours, the lights were still out. Road rage that had a big impact, although both businesses realized it could have been even worse. As far as everybody not being injured in the accident, um, everybody was fine. So that was the main, that was the main deal. In Billings, Charlie Kleps for MTN News. And here we go. We got to look with the Stockman Bank weather cam here over towards the west end. Look at the almanac for today. 72 was the warmest reading. We started off at 50 degrees, so all day long it was much warmer than average. Didn't pick up any additional precipitation for the day, but we're doing pretty well as far as the month goes. And for the year, over 16 inches of precipitation so far. Statewide temperatures into the 60s and 70s, well above the seasonal averages. Keep in mind that normally billings would be at 59 for a daytime high. So as we get into the next couple of days, we're going to be dealing with a lot of wind for tomorrow. The temperatures remain very mild through the end of the work week, but there are some changes ahead. We'll explain it all coming up in just a few minutes. A million dollar project set in downtown Billings will allow young families the chance to thrive. The project will give new mothers a safe haven and a brighter future. Our Augusta McDonald has the story. This historic home might be recognizable to you. Now it's going to be hosting some new residents who are looking forward to a new future. Heather and Heidi are twins, and they have something else in common. Heidi and I, for many years, had housed homeless teens in our own homes. It's their shared love for young families that led to a bigger dream. We started raising funds. I wrote a women's devotional to try to raise funds. They got more than they bargained for. What we had envisioned of being just a, a, a little remodel, a little renovation has turned into a brand new home. This brand new home is the Sunshine House, a temporary place for up to five teenage mothers and their babies to live. Yeah. He's my sweetie pie. Heidi's grandson Jalen is here to make sure the new place checks out. The biggest thing is um, these mamas come to us with backgrounds of trauma and abuse and neglect and poverty and so it first of all breaks the generational cycles. Breaking down these walls to build up young mothers and to filling a gap in need for permanent housing for homeless teens in Montana who become pregnant. According to a 2020 state report, Montana has 19 shelter beds for this population statewide. There are almost 5,000 pregnant or parenting young women at risk of homelessness in the state. The Sunshine Home hasn't opened yet and has already turned away 22 women seeking shelter while they raise their babies. And it allows them to have a safe, loving environment where they can get their education and um, 
have that uh, ability to thrive yeah. and deal with past trauma. It's quiet here now, but these rooms will soon be filled with kids. Jalen seems to think they'll like it here. In Billings, Augusta McDonnell, MTN News. Nearly 50 students at Washington Elementary School have some new shoes. It's all thanks to one teacher noticing a need and then a nonprofit reaching out to help. Our Alina Howder has tonight's Positively Montana story. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. A new pair of tennis shoes isn't cheap these days, so one PE teacher here at Washington Elementary, a Title I school, is setting his Fit Club students up for success with a free pair of new running shoes. That's the right foot there, right? Yeah. Monday morning at Washington Elementary kicked off to a great start. Oh, does that feel better? As 50 elementary students got new running shoes for free. They're comfy. And it all started from a simple observation by one PE teacher. You like these blue ones? Nick Atoy who manages the running club after school. I definitely think there's a need here being a title school. Being a PE teacher, I saw a lot of kids without the right tennis shoes on, sandals, Crocs, you know, boots. He decided to do something about it and reached out to the St. Vincent Healthcare Foundation, not knowing what to expect. I was just reaching out to see what I could do to help our kids here at Washington. And uh, yeah, it was like, just here you go. So yeah, really cool. Some of these kids have never had a pair of brand new shoes. A lot of them get hand-me-down shoes from older siblings or donations. So it's really exciting to see their faces light up with a new pair of shoes. I didn't know what they looked like. And um, it's fun when you can't, like, when it's like a surprise. The gesture isn't lost on nine-year-old Briella Saldana. Some kids don't really have that money to get some. Nick hopes it will encourage the kids to be more active and hopefully pound the pavement in his running club. My hope is just that they keep them, they wear them, they, they, they are excited about that and they, they tell their families about it. Some may even tell them about their favorite PE teacher. He is nice. Uh, he's cool. In Billings, Alina Howder and Tian News. Still to come on tonight's 530 News on Q2, a new roof over his head. A hardened veteran benefits big time from a national program. We'll give you the details. And from house calls to broken tackles, we'll run down the top plays after another exciting weekend of high school football. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.